some of us, motorcycles are the coolest machines around. Well, Richard Hatfield has just made them cooler and greener. There was a time when people thought of electric motorcycles as glorified golf carts on two wheels. Well, those days are long gone, and to prove the point, engineer Richard Hatfield has designed an electric-powered bike using lithium batteries that shattered the land speed record at the Bonneville Salt Flats, hitting a speed of 218 miles per hour. Sort of sounds like your vacuum cleaner, and runs like your Prius on steroids. As if your Prius only had two tires and hit 218 flat out. Usually people are very surprised. Uh, you know, the, the, there's no shifting, you twist the throttle and go. And these motors are capable of two, two and a half times the torque of a thousand cc gas bike. So the acceleration off of a corner is, is really, really impressive. Instead of gasoline, by using lithium battery power, the savings is jaw dropping. So at a typical rate in California of 10 cents a kilowatt hour, it's 18 cents worth of electricity. So if you project that out and, uh, you know, to, uh, to a fuel economy equivalent, which uh, most engineers say that a gallon of gas is 32 to 36 kilowatt hours per gallon, uh, we were getting the equivalent of almost 60 miles per gallon at 218 miles an hour. Not all of us need to get around at over 200 miles an hour. Well, maybe some of us do. So what did the numbers look like if you're driving a rather pedestrian 65 miles an hour? At that range, now we're up over 100 miles in range on a 12 kilowatt hour battery pack. So we're, we're pushing up to close to 300 miles per gallon equivalent. Again, on a bike that's capable of going over 200 miles an hour. The San Carlos bike builder didn't start out to set world records. But at heart, he's always been a gearhead. My first career was in software. I was involved in developing a software package to man manage assets for uh, uh, financial companies. And that brought me into my second career, which is I, I started and ran a company that did revolving lines of credit for emerging companies. And uh, now my third career is uh, electric motorcycles. Hatfield grew up in Iowa, and he attended Grinnell College before migrating west to UCLA. So I, I grew up in the Midwest, and uh, every summer I would do agricultural jobs, baling hay and working, uh, uh, detasseling corn, whatever we could do to save money and, and buy a new or better bike each year. So uh, my first uh, two bikes were Ducatis, a Ducati 200 Scrambler and a, and a 250 Mark IV. After that was a, a Norton 810 Dunstall and a 750 Kawasaki H2. So I'm going to take that to 18 volts. As a businessman, Hatfield may have developed revolving lines of credit for guys in suits and ties, but he was always thinking about engines and engineering. One of the big challenges on an electric motorcycle is getting the weight down to the same weight as a gas bike and packaging a lot of components in the area of a motorcycle. So our, our solution has been to make most of the components serve multiple functions. The motor is also the main stressed element of the frame. The swing arm connects to the center of the motor. The battery pack has a stress skin which carries the loads from the front fork into the motor. The secret sauce in these machines is the chef. And Hatfield has come up with his own design for the motors. This is one of our motor cases. The shock absorber mounts from the top. The swing arm mounts off of the side on bearings. The oil sump in the bottom uh, is connected to the oil air heat exchanger. And the oil cooling is really one of the key components in having high power settings for high periods of time. It's as simple as plugging it in, charging it up, and taking off. There are actually two cells in parallel, and there are 90 groups of those two cells in the bike. So off the charger, you're cranking at around 400 volts. The batteries have an incredible amount of performance, and uh, all the other uh, links in the chain also can support this. So actually, the batteries at this point will make two to three times the power that we're currently making with the bike. So we can see in the next year that it's possible to build these bikes with uh, 400 horsepower.
Eventually, and all this work will probably end up in scooters that go 50 miles an hour, or 50 miles, and you charge it on 50 cents worth of electricity. But right now, zero carbons and 200 mile per hour technology has made going green loads of fun. I'm so engaged with this and I'm so passionate about it. You know, it's really waking up in the morning and what can we do to, to move the ball forward. But it's one of the things that I tell my children is that the, the biggest limitations that we face are the ones that we put on ourselves. Usually there's so much more that's possible than what we allow ourselves to do. You know, Richard, we've been talking about motorcycles all day long. Yeah, let's ride. <laughs>